Welcome back, my name is Last No Meal, and today we're going to talk about the latest interview Mike Pondsmith had at the 5th annual retro-inspired game jam at James Cook University in Singapore, where basically all the game developer students get together and work on their own mini-game prototypes. Students can also use this event to create something and get real industry feedback and experience from various well-established game designers. This year Mike Pondsmith was invited and he had a lot to say about the changes in the gaming industry and also how politics are presented in video games and his cyberpunk world. First off, Mike reflected on the use of technology today. Keep in mind, when the first cyberpunk game came out in 1988 and then cyberpunk 2020 in the 1990, most of us weren't even alive back then. Now, during that time, people had a different vision of technology and most of the stuff that we have today, people back then could only dream about. So, it is insane how much Mike's vision of the future is similar to the one we have today. He is impressed by the nature of technology today and this is what he said. Technology is cheap, even if food is no longer cheap or housing isn't cheap, technology is really, really available. You're not going to have a world where cell phones don't exist. You can have good cell phones, you can have really crappy cell phones, but I personally own five cell phones and two of them at least I don't even use anymore. You're always going to have cell phones of some form. Now, generally, technology today is taking over our lives. It helps us in a way, but it also showcases this crazy side of the world we live in today. When Mike is talking about cell phones, the smartphones we have today are capable of almost everything. You can watch movies on them, listen to music, you can interact with people through internet and social media, you can uh, call, text, you can take photos, shoot videos, you can do pretty much everything. And the form of security your phones have back then were considered some FBI, CIA stuff. Facial recognition? Remember when you watched that in films and now your phone has that and you know you can just unlock your phone with your eyes or your face so it's crazy now for example the country i live in is generally poor and some of the stuff i had you know seen people with you know for example you're walking you know through the street and you just your eye glances through someone's window in you know living room and i'm not a creep i'm not watching through people's windows i'm just <laughs> sometimes you just see it and, you know, in their living room you have, uh, for example, an okay home, but a huge flat screen TV. It doesn't get more cyberpunk than that. Where, in, in the country that I live in, for example, which, you know, doesn't look that great, you have some of these, you know, huge ass TVs and everywhere in people's homes, it's crazy. It's crazy how much technology is presented in our lives. But that is okay, because people get most of the entertainment from their TV today, you know? Not a lot of people have computers and laptops and all that kind of stuff, so the most entertainment they can get is from their TV. It's not going out anymore, it's staying at home and binge watching something or watching the shows or whatever. So, you know, how much the world changed with technology, how people change their behavior towards other people because of technology is insane. Then also you see children running around with smartphones of the latest generation and it changes how they interact with the world and how they grow up. I grew up around, you know, different kind of technology, around PlayStation 1, around Nintendo, so the rise in that tech surprised me a lot to be honest. In just 10 years, I saw the biggest jump in technology ever. Some of the stuff that we were doing back then, like playing video games, is now mainstream. It's now mainstream in a way, where everyone is, I'm a gamer, this is a gamer, blah blah blah. It's, it's all becoming, you know, a part of their lives. You know, before, people who have been playing video games were like, you're doing what? Why don't you go out? And now it's, it's completely different. Now, discussing Cyberpunk 2077, Mike Pondsmith said that players will first be hooked by the shiny weapons and cybernetic technology before they dive into games' socio-economic and political themes. What? Did someone say politics? Huh? 
Donald Trump? No, no, not everything political has to be about left and right, you see. You can't exclude politics from cyberpunk. Politics is all around us. It's as real as anything else. And the politics in the world of cyberpunk got the world where it is today. What if huge corporations and gangs started taking over the world? Uh, the world where government has less and less power. The world where cyber attacks happen on a daily basis and information spread through that tech can influence our way of thinking. Wait, 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 wait. That, that sounds familiar. Now, social commentary and politics are a vital part of the world of cyberpunk, and as Mike said, sooner or later there's that moment where you stop and look at your hands as V, and you go, my hands have been cut off at the elbows, and now they're machines. I think a lot of times when you want your message out there about something that's bigger than a game, you have to let them find it themselves. We just lay it out like a trap and they step on it. If you want to get somebody to see your point of view, don't preach. Also today, including politics and social commentary can change the funding and development of the game. And as Mike pointed out, the world of cyberpunk is the vision he has of the world, and politics included there don't necessarily mirror the world we are living in, and for as long as you don't push a certain agenda and don't look at both sides, you are doomed. Mike is giving you his world. You are free to explore it and understand what he was trying to say. Same as when CD Projekt explained how gender will be explored, you know, in the game and you are free to, let's say, create a, a female in a male body and whatever you want, which in his eyes is something that has always been there and, you know, including it doesn't mean, hey, I'm pushing an agenda. Now, Talsorian always had a progressive thinking, as he put it, and this is not something new included into um, 2077. The gender discussion has always been there. Uh, he said this, A lot of this is kind of like, yeah, we were doing this back in the 80s, we had transgender people running around in cyberpunk in 1989, because my friends are transgender, so what's the deal? Why not? But that's not preaching, this is the world I see. Look, things change and expand, they adapt to the current world we are living in. And in a world where you can change yourself into a robot, the question of genders and us who are not biological machines anymore but we put metal in ourselves, we change the very fabric of us being humans, you know, it changes how we look at ourselves, how we look at our future, how we look at our body and whatever, and how it is reflected onto our psyche. Because in the future, it's going to be a normal thing for people without limbs to have artificial prosthetic arms, arms that right now can move and are becoming that cyberpunk reality. It's just a matter of time when those prosthetic limbs become you know, more powerful than our own and people decide I'm going to cut off my arm and I'm going to have it replaced with a different arm. That's going to cause a lot, a lot of discussion in the world we are living in when this change um, starts to happen because it is, it is actually moving into that direction. It is moving uh, into this uh, direction of technology and machines all around us. Machines replaced... Uh, a lot of, uh, let's say, work we humans today, some of the, the physical work, some of the assembly work is now done um, by robots because they can do it faster and more precise than us. So it's just a matter of time until um, that technology becomes accessible to go into our own body and we start, you know, becoming different versions of ourselves. And all of these socio-political questions are there, you just have to look for them. So to say that cyberpunk is woke because they have genderless people or whatever there is extremely stupid. It's a part of the lore, it's a part of the universe and removing this element from the world is impossible. It's not going to be the cyberpunk as we know it. Um, it's there, same as everything else. Remember when the CEO of uh, Activision or whatever said that Call of Duty is not political? Yeah, wars are fought because we are bored. Well, maybe because we are bored, but there is the element of politics there. You cannot exclude politics from warfare. It's impossible. 
because an army is just a weapon of achieving your political goals. It's very simple. We have armies to defend ourselves or to attack someone to achieve our political agenda. It, it's just a tool. So for the end, the world is constantly changing. Right now, we're experiencing a whole new part of our history. It can be weird, it can be dope, but different times create different people and it changes how we portray our reality and our world. Also, the full article from gamesindustry.biz is down below. Read the full thing, it's amazing and that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and tell me down below what you think about the world we are living in today and the politics in cyberpunk. Also check us out on Discord and Twitter if you want to continue the discussion there and as always stay breathtaking everyone, bye bye.